All right, guys. We're back on the 95 GT manifold. I did as much as I could without cutting it open. You can actually get to a very good amount of this uh, corner. I don't remember the older GT manifolds being able to get into that corner as much. I'd have to dig that out of storage for you guys. Take a look. Let's see if we can focus on that. I used a rough surface because that's what I like. There was actually quite a bit of lumps and bumps on the inside of these. So they should, uh, they should do a little bit better than stock. Okay. You can see I got as far as I could on the intake plenum. Plenum. That's actually where the throttle body attaches. It's not really the plenum. But there was actually quite a bit of uh, lumps and bumps and holes and stuff that could be fixed up a little bit. Uh, will it make a huge difference? Probably not. Take a look at the absolute tortured path that this manifold has. Let's shrink this down a little bit. All right. You've got a curve here. Check out this, this ditch it has on the... It's actually the floor. Why does it have that ditch? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what this ditch is designed to do. I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with this bracket when they casted it. But you can see it shrinks down, but gets taller here. And then it goes back to the plenum, where the plenum is relatively tall. Let me take a look at the side view of the plenum. The plenum is relatively tall. I do think the older manifolds had a bigger plenum. I would prefer a bigger plenum. But it's got, you can see where it's got a nice radius going into the runners. And the runners are this 1.6 by 1.2 oval. All right. And I'm going to show you guys how, uh, how you get the area of that pretty, pretty uh, accurately. Okay, because... I'm stupid. I do it the easy way. I take a socket, get it damn close, measure the outside diameter of the socket. That's going to give me the size of the socket, and you put it in a square, right? So you do this, the, how big it is, how much area the square is, 1.4 inches. Then you calculate how much area the circle is. And then you subtract them, and you get 1.3. Then you make believe the 1.6 by 1.2 is a rectangle, right? You take the area of that, you get that area, and then you subtract your corner radius area, right? So that gives us a 1.6 square inches of that oval, and you multiply it by 146 CFM per square inch. And we find out that oval, if everything was perfect, could flow 235 CFM. Now, of course, it's not perfect. Look at all the, the, the path it has to travel, right? Plus, it's got this turn in it. Okay, so you get through that. Then you get to go through the manifold, the lower manifold, which even on a relatively straight one like four, it's still got a decent turn in it. And then we're going through our cylinder head. And this cylinder head flowed uh, 233, 235, something like that. Okay, now the part that the haters are going to rejoice on. Charlie made a mistake. My last flow video with port 4 and 5, which is... This one, notice I made a note because I remembered afterwards I goofed up. I didn't tape this off. So that I'm like, well, that, that, that whole video is a waste then. And I said, you know what? How about if I just take number five port and flow it without the tape and see if it made a difference porting out that upper? And it did. I only did it at the, the highest flow. It went from 
to 183.2. So about nine, almost 9 CFM. We got 9 CFM by doing these as much as you can get in these uh, ports here and where the throttle body attaches, which is actually a pretty decent gain. It was, it's not bad, really. So the other flows that we're going to look at, okay, let's see. These are the ones that we left off on, right? Now, that's the ones that aren't right because I didn't tape off the lower. So they are higher. All right, somebody's going to say, well, why are they higher, Charlie? Well, it's simple. I'm sucking out of this. Actually, no, I was sucking out of this port on both tests. Why was I doing it that way? Because the plenum is so big, I can't fit it around my, my opener. So it was running on this port for both tests. Now, does it make a difference from this port to this port? I bet it does. does is it going to make that big a difference? Not really. They're both the same distance from the plenum. But it, they could still have a difference. Oh, another thing the haters will love. The last flows, I had a vacuum leak. So Charlie made two mistakes on one video. I know you guys will rejoice over that. Okay. So what I was talking about is we're flowing on this. But if you don't tape off the other runners, right, the flow will go into the plenum. And then it can suck out of all the other ones. Right? So there's more. It's got all of these areas to suck through. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the throttle body. Okay? It's going to flow more. It has less resistance in the circuit, right? So as soon as you tape off the bottom, you eliminate that, right? you got to plug your uh, fuel injector boss, and then you're getting just this port, just this port, and then through your throttle body, hopefully with no vacuum leaks. Much more accurate, right? All right, let's take a look at those. Number five. Do, 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 do. All right, we got 171, 172, which is almost identical to what we had when we flowed it wrong. <laughs> really, if you go 200, 200, they're almost identical. All right, so what is that telling us? I mean, really, they're really, they're super, super close. Well, by porting out that upper, we reduce the re resistance as much as if it had other openings to breathe through. So this was actually a pretty darn good increase. I mean, from, you know... 174.6 to 183.2. Okay. Did our swirl change? I bet it changed a bit. Two pluses and minuses. Okay. Pluses and minuses are hit or miss. Right? Plus equals plus 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 minus minus plus plus plus. Now, you have to remember this is a more accurate representation because the air is all going from the plenum through the runner. doesn't have air coming this way and through the smaller runners, right, going through. Okay, so that's five. That's our, that's our heavily dogleg port. Now, how do we do on four, which is a relatively straight, my well, second straightest port? Let's compare it to, let's compare them to each other. Okay, our pluses and minuses. 33.4, 32.8, right? We had the same thing on the other side. It was a little bit less, right? Minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. Minus equals plus, 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 all the way down. That really didn't change a whole lot. But take a look at what did change. 
here we had, I think we had about 9 CFM difference between ports, right? Take a look at how close we are here. These two are the same. These are off a tenth, right? 0.93, right? Almost 4, 3, 2.8. All right, 171.2, 175.2, 172.8, 177.5, 173.3, 178. Now, I don't want to brag, but damn, that is awfully close between a relatively straight port and a very dog leg port. Let's take a look at our swirl. I'm going to compare these swirl numbers to what it was on the lower not taped off. All right, interesting with the, the plus and minuses on, on the swirl versus what they were when it wasn't flowed correctly, right? Minus, 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 plus, 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 minus, plus, plus, minus, right? Hit or miss through the whole thing. Now compare them from this side to this side, right? Because these two ports are going to be working together. Zero, minus 140. So the swirl is going in the opposite direction. Minus is counterclockwise in, in the chamber, plus is clockwise in the chamber. Okay, 68.4, 68 68.4, 68 98.1, 98.2, 123, 124. I already went through that, right? Uh, swirl will go on. Sorry, guys. 25, 650. 22, 0. 25, 690. It starts to pick up faster, right? Same thing over here, but this started way earlier, okay? We got another, well, it started the same place, and then died, and then started back up. All right, 1050, 1720. So we got a little more flow, and we got a little more swirl. But these two are much closer to each other than these two are, right? Is this swirl went up, this swirl was hit a miss, this flow and this flow are much closer now. So we're going to have a pretty darn balanced burn, I think, between the amount of flow you get through and the swirls. The swirls on both of them are pretty darn good. If you're getting 1,500 or so, you're good. You're good to go. Okay, like they say, extra swirl just takes energy away from filling the cylinder. And remember, the lower, the, the upper intake is only good for 235, theory. So now we're sticking it on a head that only flows 235, and we're getting almost 180 out of it, 175 we could say. You guys didn't calculate how many horsepower we can make with these, but these are more accurate. Give me an idea how much power we can make with this. And uh, if someone's interested in this intake, I think I'm going to put this up for sale. I have uh, a set of stock injectors that go with it. I have the ported throttle body that goes with it. Go to charlesvideo.gmail.com. And uh, let me know if you're interested. I'll give you a price on it. Going to have to make some extra money. Wife is screaming about the inflation. I can't imagine why. All right, guys. I think that's all I got today. Have a good night.